So we are recording. Um, this is our or your opportunity to, you know, bring up topics related to lecture or lab or the course in general for us to talk about. Um, it's sort of like um, a communal office hour in some respects, I guess. So um, I wanted to pass along one topic of interest, I think. I had mentioned to you that uh, Kyra Nolder had taken a and for me, I think a year or more ago, and was going to be a tutor in the Learning Center. And I, I indicated to you that starting week two, she was going to start to be available to meet with you if you have any interest in doing that. Um, and I've come to understand or find out that she will be doing weekly study groups for a and one through the Learning Center um, on Sunday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. Sunday nights, uh, 8 to 9? Yep, 8 to 9, Sunday nights. And so I would reach out to her if you're at all interested. Um, I assume you can contact her through the Learning Center. And uh, I'm surprised she didn't send me the Zoom link. I can certainly uh, ask her again for that. But I guess, you know, maybe in the interim, if you're at all interested in joining this study group on Sundays from 8 to 9, just contact Kyra. Her name is spelled K-I-R-A, Kyra, Nolder, N-O-L-D-E-R. Um, the other thing I can give you is probably just her email. You could email her. That might be the quickest way to do it. Yeah. So let me let me put in the chat her her email. There's her email. Is that that train outside your house? I'm in my office. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the train. I cannot imagine living somewhere where a train comes by. You hear people who have apartments are like trains like <laughs> yeah. door. And everything's <laughs> vibrating off the windowsills and fireplaces and all that. It comes, it comes by every time I'm on Zoom. <laughs> okay, so we'll open it up for questions. Again, I, I don't come with, the, with any uh, uh, lecture in mind for these reviews. They're, they're there uh, to allow you to ask questions and to go over whatever questions you might have that you'd like to review. Now, we haven't gotten into a whole lot yet in class. Um, you should be into chapter four for lecture by now. So perhaps there are some questions related to chapter one or even the lab exercise, number two, the, uh, that you hopefully are, are spending some time in because we've got a quiz, don't forget tomorrow, both lab quiz number one on body organization and terminology and uh, lecture quiz one as well. Sadie, I can tell you're going to ask a question. <laughs> um, so I printed out the rat dissection lab and then you yeah. said the microscope. I can't find that one or is that one just like strictly in our lab book? Yeah, that's just in your lab book. Because yeah. I saw it in there, so I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, and so not every exercise we do in lab will necessarily involve you bringing something for that. Oftentimes it might be just a model to fill out, you know, numbers next to structures. Um, so no, not every exercise requires something to be brought. Yeah. 
Good question. John? Uh, question? <laughs> That's okay. it. Hang on. Okay. No, I thought you were going to ask something. So, so chapter, the lab quiz and the lecture quiz. Right. And I sent you guys an email asking you to um, amend the syllabus that you may have printed off last week. Yes. Um, I had 10 lecture quizzes listed on the lecture schedule. Um, and there should have only been five listed. And so I, I did fix that. Um, that was from a face-to-face -face version, probably from last spring maybe anyway my, my apologies for causing any confusion there but there's only five lecture quizzes i believe well that shortens up things <laughs> yeah it does so so how's chapter one let's just maybe start with chapter one that was the introduction to a and p Yes. Uh, is is that chapter going okay? Are there things you'd like to review? Questions you'd like to ask related to chapter one? Because I got everything highlighted pretty much in chapter one. <laughs> I see. No. I see somebody else shaking their head. <laughs> what what what's the main takeaway? Well, again, I think I, I mentioned to yeah. you the other day that the way I would prepare for the quizzes and the exams would be to use the the PowerPoints as a guide. Mm -hmm. So I'm pulling up chapter one as we speak. Just give me a second to load it. Everybody see the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. I can see. Yeah. Um, so again, I think this can provide guidance. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. In other words, uh, the first couple pages of this chapter where they talk about origins of medical science, which was section 1.1. 1. 1, um, I didn't really allude to that at all. So that's not something you really need to spend too much time worrying about. But it's just general, you know, introduction about the study of corpses was forbidden during the Middle Ages, blah, blah, blah. Just interesting stuff. Um, section 1.2 is kind of where this first slide begins, which is the definition of anatomy and physiology. So you should know those definitions, right? Okay. And, and then I introduced section 1.3, which is levels of organization. Yeah. And so I would be familiar with these terms and the idea that one leads to a more complex level, which leads to a more complex level, blah, 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 until we get up to the organism. Another way of thinking of that is to take you and, and divide you down into smaller levels of, of organization, you know, go in reverse order. Um, in chapter two, which is the chemistry chapter, um, that kind of talks about you know, you know, these first three levels in some respects. And chapter four, uh, I'm sorry, chapter chapter three. Three, yeah. Three, yeah. Uh, three begins to, to talk about and review, really, the organelles. What are the different organelles? What do they do for the cell? And then we're going to be getting into tissues coming up in chapter... Five. So this sort of mirrors the general, you know, uh, sequence of the course in some respects. Now, once we get 
you know, past this, we're going to be focusing on organ systems. Like this semester, we're going to cover integumentary system, uh, skeletal system, muscular system, respiratory system, cardiovascular system, and lymphatic system. So we're, we're going to spend a lot of time on separate systems. And also there's a, a chapter on blood. Blood is not a system. Blood is actually a type of tissue, believe it or not. And you'll be learning about, about that in chapter five. Um, and then after that slide, I introduced this concept of homeostasis, which is also introduced in the textbook there on page 16. Now, there's a, a section prior to that that kind of talks a little bit about core themes in a and And I'm not going to ask you about you know, what are the five key concepts listed in your book? I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to ask you, what are the underlying mechanisms and processes your book describes? You know, we're going to talk about those, those, those processes and those topics as we get into some of these chapters, but consider section 1.4 like section 1.1, and that is to just read, read over that section and get a flavor for what the book is trying to say. That's all. Yeah, you, you can't possibly know all this stuff. Yeah. No, but you can, if you have heard about, um, you know, cell, cellular differentiation and have con some concept of what that means, then we'll, when we talk about cell division and how sometimes cells differentiate in, in certain ways to give rise to organ systems and tissues and so forth, then that's gonna make more sense to you because you've at least heard that term differentiation before. Or when we talk about receptors later, you're gonna have some sense of maybe what that is because you read about cell to cell communication, a little blurb about it in chapter one. So it just sort of whets the appetite of a little bit, I guess, or sets the stage for some additional, more thorough description and, and discussion of these topics. Um, this is just kind of an overview. These are some, some key concepts and key mechanisms that we're gonna be exploring in this book. So with chapter two, we won't, I won't see any of this tomorrow. That's correct. It's one and three, okay. That's right, that, and part of three, not all of three. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, the characteristics of life and the requirements of organisms, I'm not gonna ask you for the five requirements of organisms. So don't spend minutia time memorizing water, food, oxygen, heat, pressure read that over, get a sense of what they're trying to talk about. But I do talk about homeostasis, I list it yes. here. And so that is something you definitely wanna know what that term means. And then we talk about it, we give an example of it uh, in, in chapter one as it relates to body temperature. So that's certainly something to spend time focused on. Um, the first few slides after that, after this initial homeostasis slide, uh, describe the three major players in any homeostatic mechanism, which are listed here, receptors, a control center, and some effectors. These always are here, regardless of what mechanism we talk about that tries to maintain a stable internal physiologic state. That's what homeostasis is. And then I go in into more detail describing um, this analogy of you know how does a thermostat work? How does a furnace and an air conditioner work to keep your living room at 68 degrees Fahrenheit? That's a really great analogy because it's, it's, it's homeostasis of temperature in your house. I mean, it's not a physiologic thing, it's a mechanical heating and cooling thing, right? But we can use this example to better understand the mechanisms that go on in you and me, if we can relate it to say how a furnace and how an air conditioner keeps you at, at 68 Fahrenheit all year long. So again, I think the PowerPoints do a nice job, pat on the back, 
Um, because I've spent a lot of time. I, I cannot tell you the number of hours I spent I spend putting these together and refining them and tweaking them. And well, yeah. maybe if I change this word, will this be clearer? Or if I remove that word, will that will that remove confusion in the minds of students? I mean, I'm always trying to think about that. Uh, but seriously, I've spent thousands of hours on these PowerPoints over the years. Uh, could they be better? Yeah, probably could be a lot better. But but they're put together in a in a in a way that I hope. And you tell me, you know, if it's if I can change it in some way to make it better, I'm I would love to do that. But they they are um, designed to kind of take you through the process of what to learn. So with like this question right here on the slide, would we like see something like that on the quiz? Um, I think that is a huge essay question. Uh, it's a great question, but no, um, Sadie, that's just too, that's going to involve too much explanation for a quiz question, okay. I think. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I could ask you something like uh, name an effector that um, aids in cooling the body or name an effector that raises body temperature? Would you know the answer to those two questions? So what, what would be an effector that helps to cool the body when you become overheated? This goes back to that slide here. An effector is, is responding to the control center Sweating? Yeah, sweat glands. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, another thing that the book I think talks about that helps to cool the body is your blood vessels on the surface of your skin dilate. They get bigger while the core blood vessels constrict. Well, why would that help cool the body? Do you know? Do you know where most of the heat is transported? How it's transported in the body? Most heat is transported by the blood. So if you can bring more blood to the surface, what's going to happen? If blood contains most of the heat, and you're bring most, bringing most of, more blood to the surface, what are you going to lose? Heat. More heat, right. What's that going to do to your body temperature? And you go down. Exactly. Do you see what I'm saying? It's logical. Just think about it, logically. Now, if you get too cold and you enter a hypothermic situation, hypothermic situation, hypo, um, how can you prevent... Heat loss. Shiver. You start yep. to shiver. Yep. Shiver. Shiver is one mechanism. Yep. Absolutely. How about blood vessel wise? What do you want to do? The surface blood vessels you would like to close off. Constrict. Right. How about the deeper core blood vessels? Expand. Heart, lung. Yeah. Relax. Divert the blood internally. Yeah, but then why why does the heart rate go up once oh because of the shivering? No, no, no. When you get when you get cold, your heart rate falls. It falls, okay. No, no, I'm when I when I say you get cold, I know I'm not saying when you're sitting in the living room and you get chilled watching right. TV. <laughs> no. Fall into an ice, uh, fall into a pond, frozen pond. That's what I'm talking about. When you are dealing with an individual, you've all heard this, right? Somebody falls through the yeah, ice and they, and they and they pull them out after half hour. And they revive them, and they and they're fine. It's like a miracle. This happens. Um, uh, the body diverts that that blood to the brain and to vital organs to maintain to maintain them, it's, and and the metabolism really falls because of the cold temperature. Um, it's not everybody can survive under you know those conditions, but you do hear of. of Occasionally, people that do, pretty amazing. 
you think I would think that they would heat up first and then it would drop, right? No, no, I don't think so. No, it would drop from whatever they're at. Hmm. Yeah. That would scare that would scare me. I would like go, I think it would go into shock. Well, right. Right. Because of the shock, it would keep you somewhat. Hmm. Well, yeah. Shock in the sense of the cold. What what can cause shock in people is if you lose too much blood, you go into shock. That's a physiologic shock, not a not a uh, you know, falling into an icy okay. pond is a is a, a physical sensational shock. Two different words. Good. Thanks for clearing that up. <laughs> so um, anyway, th that's you know chapter one. Here I introduce a different type of of feedback called positive feedback. Most homeostatic mechanisms employ negative feedback. Well, do you know what the difference is between negative and positive feedback? You, you should know that. And I give you some examples of that. So again, the PowerPoints, you know, really, you should be using them. They're, they're there for a reason. If you're comfortable with what the PowerPoints are saying, then you're going to be in good shape for the quizzes and the exams. Now, I do mention at the last uh, part of this PowerPoint, the last slide of the PowerPoint, I remind you that any of the clinical application or from science to technology boxes that we may not and often do not have time to talk about, I still want you to read those because they are pertinent to the, the topic being presented in the chapter. They're interesting, um, they're applicable. Uh, and so if you're going into nursing or coding or some medical field, which most of you are, uh, this I would think would be something you'd be, be wanting to look at and read. So I guess back to uh, chapter one, are there any parts of this that are causing questions? Questions, problems. You know, I was telling somebody last week that until you get a quiz under your belt uh, and maybe an exam under your belt, you're always kind of wondering, am I studying enough? Am I studying the right stuff? And, I, you know, everybody's different, so I can't give you a, a standard answer. Um, I just think, you know, review, 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 spend as much time as you can uh, with this stuff. Uh, it does require a considerable amount of outside time. That's just the nature of the beast. Sometimes it takes students a little time to know what that is, how much time to spend and how to use that time efficiently. But you, you come to learn how to do that just by practice. But as I said, note cards are great. Study groups are great. Going to the review sessions are great. Going to Kyra's uh, group study could be helpful to you. You know, make use of those, those tools in your tool chest. So feedback loop, loops is something that's going to show up. You should know what a negative feedback mechanism is. Absolutely. It's an integral part of homeostasis. Absolutely. And you're going to hear about it again and again in different organ systems. There's many physiologic mechanisms that rely on negative feedback. Every organ system uses a myriad of negative feedback mechanisms. Okay, that sounds good to me. I noticed that uh, this book asks questions. Should we answer those questions? 
Um, well, that, it's kind of up to you. I mean, as I'm looking at, I just happened to look down in chapter two, I have a page opened up and it says practice. There's a section called practice and there's some questions there. Um, yeah, I mean, you certainly could answer those. Those are sort of like the chapter objective types of things that I would I would I would have put in. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if the book has the answers in the back. Let me look here. Sometimes they have the answers. Um, They're in the appendix, appendix D, I think. Yeah, because I did that too, studying like all oh. the questions and. So yeah, the answers are in the back. Yeah, they give you, they tell it to you too. Appendix C, laboratory test and clinical importance. Well, no, 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 no. Oh, that, okay. that's, yeah, that's different. a different appendix, okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh yeah, appendix G, well, all those figure answers, figure question answers, appendix G. Appendix G. So that's figure questions. What page is that? Uh, 939. Let me just see. Chapter 5. Okay, so some of the figures, not all of them, but some of the figures apparently will ask a question. And so you can, yeah, okay. You can check those out. Let's see, okay. So they are, yeah, they are called, um, let's see, 22. I'm just looking here to make sure. Fine. Well, they don't have all the answers to the practice questions, though. Um, let's see. I don't, I don't think there's the answers to all the questions. So I'm not sure which appendix you were referring to. Um, It would be nice if they had the chapter assessment answers. Yeah. See, there is this add-on thing called Connect that I could have I could have requested you buy into um, that might have additional interactive questions and things, but I was trying to save money, save you money from having to spend an extra, I don't know, 40 bucks or whatever. If you, if you want to look into this uh, McGraw-Hill Connect, and it's described, I think, in, on, uh, well, I don't have a page number, but it's in the front of your book somewhere. You could probably contact the publisher and get a, a link if you wanted to, to explore that. Um, I tell you, I, I'm a little perturbed at the publisher. Years ago, they used to provide all this stuff with the adoption of the textbook, and the students could go to a separate website and, and access all this. And, and suddenly, I think somebody at, at, at headquarters in New York probably thought, well, our, our uh, sales are dropping because people can get everything on the internet, and so let's do this add-on thing and charge people for that. And I told the, the sales rep a couple of years ago, I said, I think it's unconscionable that, that you're passing on this cost to students for stuff that you did provide for free or included in the price, I should say. You paid good money for the textbook. So, you know, it's just one of those things that really irks me. So I was less um, open to the idea of adding this on because they always tell you, well, you can add Connect for your students if you want. I should check into whether I could make it optional because I don't know if, if some of you might you know utilize that. There comes a point in time where you have 
you know, you get saturated with all this stuff. Like, you know, you get overwhelmed. Like, I, do I have to have all this to succeed in A&P? No, <laughs> you don't. Okay. You know? So anything on chapter one? Okay, how about chapter two? Um, we, we didn't and won't spend formal time in class on the chemistry chapter, but we could spend time in review going over any of those objectives if you want to as, as we prepare for that chemistry uh, quiz. And that's, what is that, a week from Wednesday? Yes, it is. Yeah, the 10th. As far as chapter three goes, just want to let you know that the quiz tomorrow is not going to cover all of three. Um, I think I told you it would it would cover up through. Oh, what did I say? The organelles section up to three point three. I think three point three. I think so. Where, see, I have a problem with like when did the section end? You know what I mean? Like, Look in your book on page one hundred. I see 3.1, right? Yeah, keep going. Then uh, 3.2. It should be pretty easy to find the sections. Okay. On my In my book, it's page 100. I'm not sure if it's the same page number on yours. Section 3.3 .3 starts on page 100. See, that's, see, that's where I get messed up, man, because it's 3.2 is on page 100 for me. Okay, so yeah, you have the um, the three hole punch. Yeah, yeah, the three hole punch thing. Yeah, so, so what what they do is they include some introductory stuff at the beginning of the book that you you probably don't have. So the page sequencing gets thrown off a little bit, but still you should be able to find the sections. They're the same thing. It should be entitled "Movements Into and Out of the Cell," right? Can you find that? Yeah. Shaking yeah, I see 3.3. Yeah, movements into and out of the cell. Okay, I got it. Yeah, that's on page 100. It's on page 100. I, I got it on 109 in this. this uh, so, so John's got the three hole punch. punch. You guys have the, the loot. I have that too. Yeah, oh, okay. I have a loose leaf and a binder. Yeah. Then you, why is what? You have a different book or a different. What's, I don't get it. You have the three hole punch too, Sadie? Yeah, so do I. Well, and a binder. Yeah, right, but it's it's the same thing you bought. Mm -hmm. Why is John's different then? That's weird. Is it the same edition? Like 15. 15, right? Is yours 15th, John? I don't know. 15th edition? You, did you buy it from the bookstore this year? Yes, I did. It's the 15th edition. <laughs> And I'm looking at the table, it says movement into and out of the cell, 3.3, 3, page 109. Huh. I have no idea why. I, <laughs> I guess the, when you when you get together in lab tomorrow, you should compare books and see what the heck. Yeah. Is. It's nice to be able, you know, for me to say, okay, guys, look on page 101 at figure 3.19. Now, it sounds to me, you know, like Sadie and Beth can do that, but John's got to be looking for the figure. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? What's going on? <laughs> Not the page number. It's easier to go with page number, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. I have a question. Okay. About labware. Because, like, my teachers have always been, like, really weird about it. Like, you can't wear, like, Crocs. So, like, they even said, like, sometimes, like, in college, you couldn't wear, like, regular, like, bear paw boots or, like, Ugg boots. So like, I was just wondering what your like, where kind of rules were. Yeah, well, um, generally, um, that's a good question. I think in, 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 most I lab, in most laboratories, they probably tell you like no open toe shoes. Um, I'm not sure if your lab book gets that specific. Um, 
in microbiology, I know we adhere to <clears throat> no sandals, you know, kind of thing. Um, I am not that concerned in A and P lab, so I personally would not have an issue with that. Um, what other things did you mention? Um, like winter boots. Oh no, that's <laughs> fine. I mean, <sighs> yeah, because my like my science teachers, like my chemistry teacher, she was just like really like I don't know like anal about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> well, I, I, actually, I'm, I'm anal too. So I have to just admit that. <laughs> but maybe, maybe I'm not the worst. <laughs> yeah. um, no, no food or drink in lab. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. That's just a good rule for any laboratory because you know we have preservatives and, and that kind of thing. But if people want to step outside and, and get a drink of water, or a soft drink, you can you can leave on the outside of the of the doorway there and just go out and get a swig of it or whatever. Um, you know that's not a problem. But no food in lab. Um, but really, there's no other dress code, if you will, that you need to worry about. And I provide you with all you need. You know, I would basically bring a lab book, bring a notebook, um, you know, pen, pencil. Um, any yeah, we provide most everything that you're gonna need. All right. So we'd be perfectly fine to show up in Crocs and sweatpants, correct? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. That's where I'm at. <laughs> you love Crocs? Yes. My people let me wear Crocs either because they had holes in the top. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't think so. Sorry, guys, back to earlier when we were talking about the answers for those practice questions, it was Quizlet. I just forgot. If you oh, ever go and look yeah. at Quizlet, right. they have like flashcards that you can practice if you yeah, can find them. Okay. And that's where I was getting some of the answers from for those questions. So, all right, good. That helps. So, what do you, you would type in the questions from the like the practice questions in the chapter? Yeah, like if you Google like Quizlet. Right. And then if you, whatever chapter, whether it's chapter three, just hit in biology, chapter three, or A&P, chapter three, yeah. and you'll see that some of those, most Questions. of those is where I got my answers when I was going through Quizlet. Right, that's good to know. Is, is Quizlet just for any A&P book? No, it's for anything. Any anything in life, huh? Yeah, it, yeah, I used it last semester for like chemistry, a few of my classes, and it does, it has like kind of the same, like whatever's in the book. I just noticed that that was on Quizlet too, so. Yeah, I used that for my lab report um, to like check over my answers once I got through it all, and like there's things on all of it. Yeah, I use it for uh, medical coding, like coming up with some of the codes, but then it's just just a tool to verify right what it is because you can't really go off of it because you know what i mean yeah no it's just kind of for practice and yeah yeah i just checked mine over is it quizlet.com yep yep and obviously you assume that the authors or whatever uh, of the website and are giving you the proper answers it's not just uh, oh they're, they're going to be the proper answer it's just that you, it, it, it'd be wise to to keep reading. Because most of these are like made by like teachers as well as like study sets for their students. So okay. most of them are correct. Yeah. yeah, great. Excellent. Well, I'm probably the only one that didn't know about Quizlet. Is it relatively new? Um, no. no. I've used it in high school for like the past like five years. <laughs> It's new to me. I didn't know about it either. Too. So <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's out there. Yeah, yeah I've been using it, it since. As an app, like you can download it and then like make a Google account. Like I still signed into yeah. like my old Google account from like my high school, and then like it's free. And then you can like it's like you can make your flashcards. It quizzes you on like a bunch of different things. Like you can set it up as like a test, take like multiple choices. Yeah. Um, like there's a million different like study sets on there of how to do it. It oh, is. Great, I'm gonna check you it out. You got it for free. Yeah, when I too. tried to sign up, they I had, I think it was gonna charge me for it. So I didn't know that it was free. No, oh. just keep doing it. If you just keep following the process as if you're gonna pay for it. Okay. 
it'll it'll turn into something entirely new. Right? If I get it for free through my school, then I just use my old school email. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I use it for Spanish a lot because like you could like put the definition in and then like it'll give you the definition and then you like type out like the vocab like so I use that. Well. That's great. Excellent. It is. I'm excited. I learned something. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going like to check I said, this out. I wouldn't take it for gospel. I would still read the chat. <laughs> I found well, that yeah, out the, the hard way. Yeah. You know, it's so it great. If any of you go to Kyra's uh, study group on Sunday, um, and you know, I'm I probably the only one I didn't know about Quizlet, but you know, maybe bring that up to her, or if there's a big group, so that everybody knows about it. Sure. I can't believe yeah. you guys don't know about that. I just learned last semester. <laughs> I haven't been to school since 2002. I don't think they had that then. I don't know. <laughs> I, I've been to school since 1987. 2020. Yeah, but I picked that up at like 2006. That's because you you've been going to school though. I don't know, right? Because you're old, John. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back back to topic here. All right. Um, so, uh, how about you know chapter chapter three stuff? Anything there, which would be kind of organelles, what they do. Chapter four. That's kind of what what uh, the first part of three is, and then of course two is the chemistry. So should we follow along with the slides again for like stuff for the quiz? For three? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. And let me okay. I'll pull that up as long as we're talking about it. Um. So we're good with one. I'm opening up three. It takes a second to open up here. So uh, this is the first slide of uh, chapter three, which is the composite composite um, eukaryotic cell, and then. Um, what this does is it kind of goes through the major cell parts, which are the organelles for the most part, even though most people wouldn't consider the cell membrane an organelle. Um, it's kind of the outer skin of the cell, if you will. But this is a nice table um, because it, it kind of summarizes the various organelles that are going to be described in the chapter and kind of describes their shape a little bit and then what they do. And then I do spend some time walking through the cell membrane because that's a real important part of the cell. It regulates what enters and leaves the cell. That's what this term selectively permeable means. That certain things are allowed through, while other things are restricted. You know, for example, that, that uh, cells die without oxygen, right? If you deprive a cell of oxygen, eventually it dies. So oxygen has to be able to get into the cell from the outside. And what other gas needs to get out of the cell? CO2, right? Yeah. So that's just one example of, of this notion that the cell membrane acts as a bridge between the, the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. And so some substances can, can diffuse right across that lipid bilayer, it's called. Yeah while other materials have to make use of these transport proteins to get in or out of the cell. And that has to do with the chemistry of the substance. If your lipid soluble, in other words, if you can dissolve in lipid, like oxygen and CO2 can, then you can move right through the bilayer. If your lipid insoluble, like water, let's say, water doesn't mix with oil, it has to make use of a special embedded membrane protein to get into or out of the cell. Yeah, but water can still get in, correct? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I can get in, you can get out. But it can only do that as a result of utilizing these special transport proteins, these transmembrane proteins, they're called. And so that's what I, I talk about here, right, in the PowerPoint. Again, the PowerPoint should be leading you through the material. And um, I talk about some of these 
various membrane proteins and kind of what they do. Real important stuff. It's not strictly movement of materials in and out. That's a real important function. But some of these proteins will act to help identify the cell. See where it says here, cell surface proteins establish cell? Yes. What that means is that your immune system has to be able to identify other cells that make up you. We call them self cells from non-self cells. For example, a bacterium that's not supposed to be in your body, it was introduced via a wound um, or a virally infected, infected cell. Um, the immune system has to be able to, to recognize that infected cell and kill it, get rid of it. And so these surface proteins act as identifiers for your immune cells. Real interesting. So I got a question. So if you get enough cells in a in an area, right, like like cancer cells, mm -hmm. the body tries to fight that, or because it's it's part of the body already. You're right. Cancer cells arise from self cells that are dividing uncontrollably, but the immune system can recognize those. Um, cells as not uh, as self cells that have gone what gone berserk, right? And the immune system tries to get rid of those, but if the cancer is growing, you know, um, and spreading, and it has insidious ways of circumventing the immune response, um, then that's an issue. And we'll talk more about cancer coming okay. up in. Um, Actually, and that's why blood is a tissue in chapter four. Well, that's not why blood's a tissue. It, it's well, how does that how does that explain? Oh, it's just a fact. I don't know. Um, well, we'll get into blood. We'll get into tissue. Okay. Right <laughs> anyway, right. it, it it this slide just kind of. Well, it gives you an overview of the diverse functions of different membrane proteins. And then um, what, we're, what we'll be getting into in the second half of the chapter are some uh, mechanisms that regulate and describe movements of materials into and out of the cell, across the cell membrane. So I don't spend any time here in the PowerPoint, do I, on organelles, because I ask you to read over that first, I don't know how many pages it is, six, eight pages that review the organelles. Because you, you, you had high school bio, you, you've heard of mitochondria and chloroplasts and lysosomes and rough and smooth ER, I hope. May have been a number of years, but organelles have not changed in uh, you know, a couple million years. So they're still pretty relevant. And um, so that's not described, but I, I say that in the PowerPoint lecture. I tell you, when I'm, on, I'm not going to lecture on organelles. You have to go through and read that. And so, as it pertains to the quiz tomorrow, you know, it's it's really from from uh, the beginning up to where I start to talk about movements of materials and mechanisms uh, that you're not going to be tested on this on the quiz. I'll be going into that um, in the latter half of chapter three. Chapter three has a lot of a lot of topics to cover here. Lots of topics. So the quiz isn't on three point three. No, up two. Just three. It, it's it's basic. It's mostly on three two. Because three one is just a paragraph or two. Yeah. Most of the quiz, as it relates to the chapter three material, is on the composite cell, the organelles, what they do. So all of one. Well, no, not all of one, right? Because part of one, we are learning in exercise two in lab, right? There are certain sections that you can omit okay. in chapter one, right?
the regional terminology section, the body cavities and membrane section of chapter one. You know, that I told you in the PowerPoint, you don't need to know that for lecture. We're going to do it in lab. Okay, hard to believe, but our time is up. Um, so this is kind of how the reviews are gonna sort of go. So again, write questions down, make notes, bring them to review, ask. All right, so what I'm gonna do is um, I will post this review on in the course shell. Uh, in the review, I should say, course shell. And uh, if you ever want to go back, uh, you can watch it. All right. Okay, guys, we will see you tomorrow. What? Tomorrow, right? All right. Have a good rest Thank of the day. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye.